In this lesson, we're going to look at how to use existing character and paragraph styles. In the past few videos, we've looked at how to format text on the screen. And we know um, that if we want to format some text, we can select the text and then use the formatting tools such as font style, size, bold, italic, underline, and then we can also add alignments. That works very well, but there are some inbuilt styles that we can also use. Styles take on a number of different attributes. That means the style will contain details of the font, the size, whether it's bold, italic, underlined, and alignment. It'll also tell us things about colour. All these bits of information are built into one style. There's two kinds of styles, character styles and paragraph styles. They work in exactly the same way. And the only difference is that a paragraph style works on a whole paragraph, whilst a ca character style works on single letters or words. We'll look at paragraph styles first. Because a paragraph style works on a whole paragraph, it means that you don't have to select the whole paragraph. You can do, or you can just make sure that the cursor insertion point is somewhere on the paragraph that you want to work with. To apply the style, we do it in exactly the same way as we would changing the font style. But we use this box just to the left, the style box. Remember these always reflect the styling or the formatting of the text that you've got selected. So the formatting of this particular text is normal. It's a normal style. To change that, we can click the drop down arrow and choose one of the inbuilt styles. For example, heading one. Just look to the right of here, we can see there's a paragraph mark. That tells us that this is a paragraph style. So I'll click on the heading one and it's applied the heading one style to the whole paragraph. I've got the cursor insertion point on that paragraph so we can see at a glance that the style associated or the formatting associated with the heading one style is font Arial, size 16, bold, left aligned, automatic colour. They're the attributes assigned to that character style. I'll apply a style to the next paragraph. Click on the drop down box, choose a style. I'll choose heading three this time. And you see it's applied it to the whole of the paragraph. The whole of the paragraph has now got heading three associated with it, which is Arial, size 13, bold, left aligned. So you can see for consistency, for example, you could use the heading styles to give a consistent format into all your headings and subheadings in a document. Let's have a look at the next paragraph. Drop down arrow. Instead of choosing one of these styles, I want to show you that we can do more. That opens up the styles and formatting task pane at the right hand side. So of course we can get to that if the task pane was already open just by selecting the menu option styles and formatting. Now this window is really about, I'm going to make it a bit bigger, is really about creating and modifying and that's for another lesson. ECDL Advanced tells us how to create and modify our own styles. But for this video we're just applying styles that already exist. Here's the list of styles that we can use, the ones that we've already seen. But on this drop down box at the bottom, if I choose just out of sight, I'll move that up a little bit. If I choose all styles, then you can see that Word has a lot of styles built in. As I scroll down, you'll see some of them are paragraph styles. We've got the paragraph style next icon next to it. Some are character styles. The character styles have the letter A. The problem is as I point to it, it disappears. See, just above my cursor now there's the letter A. That shows a character style. That means emphasis 
is a character style. So we'll try some of these. If I select quick brown, the quick brown fox, for example, and then apply the emphasis style, it applies that styling to just the characters that I had selected, which is Times New Roman, size 12, italic, left aligned. Let's select some more text. There's a character style. We'll scroll down the list to find one. There's one here. Oh, that doesn't look very different. Um, try to find one that looks a little bit different for us. There we are. HTML variable. That's the name of the style. If I click on it, it applies that character style to the text, which is Times New Roman, size 12 and italic. And there's the style name there. So applying styles is actually very, very simple. To apply a character style, just select the text that you want to work with. Choose the style that you want to apply. And click. That's applied the strong style. The strong style is times room 112 bold. Or if you want a paragraph style, make sure you've got somewhere on the paragraph selected. And choose one of the paragraph ones. I'll choose subtitle. And it applies that styling to the whole paragraph. Lots of styles in there for you to use. There's even table styles. You really need to concentrate on the paragraph styles and the character styles. And you can tell the difference from the letter A or the paragraph mark. If you are using the task pane and you hover over any of these styles, it pops up with a screen tip telling you exactly what the style is. See, the strong style is the default paragraph font, but made bold. The subtitle is a normal font uh, style with um, Arial centered, and built in spacing three points before and after spacing. So as you can see, styles are really very simple to use, and they're a way of standardizing your document quickly and easily.